What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is The Shiv, and today we're looking at Next Space Rebels. Now, I've played this game for 70 hours now. I've seen all three endings. I have all but one achievement, and that achievement requires me redoing Hovercat, and I don't ever want to do that specific challenge ever again. So, yeah, we'll just go without doing that. Uh, regardless, this is a really fun game. Uh, think Kerbal meets uh, Social Media Simulator. Uh, the basic concept is you build rockets, uh, you take on challenges uh, via building rockets or robots or things of that nature, and then you take, uh, after you do the challenges, it uploads a video to their version of YouTube, and you try to get as many uh, subscribers as you possibly can. You know, pretty simple. The game has a relatively complex... Uh, uh, combo system involving uh, tags for your videos and if you tag it with certain things or if you build a rocket with those tags in mind you can actually get lots of views I think the highest I've gotten so far is like five six million um, using that tag combo and that's going to be really important the more subs you get uh, the higher up in the rankings of say the star tube is what they call it uh, algorithms you get and you break through like certain levels like iron copper silver gold platinum diamond uh and then of course there's an alternative platform but i don't really want to spoil anything uh and it works basically on the same principles now once you get past a certain rank with uh star tube you'll start making money and that's where that whole combo system really starts kicking in uh as you go up the ranks you get a bigger percentage of money and so on and so on. And use that money to buy a lot of cool things like, you know, a NASA engine that costs $283,000. Or possibly to pay an organization to keep going. Just saying. Um, so yeah, it's definitely challenging. It's a $15 game and I've put 70 hours in. So obviously there's been a lot there to keep me coming back. Now, is the game perfect? No. It, it it still has a lot of bugs, a lot of teething issues, and the developers are working on that. They've already uh, patched this twice um, since it's come out. Uh, they've been active in the Steam discussions. Uh, I've had a few conversations with them. They're very nice people. Um, but one of the discussions I had with them was about uh, future challenges, because once you've completed all the challenges, it's like, okay, well, now what? Well, go see the other endings. Well, okay, I did that. Well, now what? Well, get all the achievements. Well, I did all of that. Really? What about Hovercat? Fuck you. Uh, so, what else is there to do? I brought up the idea of having, you know, maybe like every two weeks a challenge that they issue or every month a challenge they issue. And they could do this via just an update. And with that update, they introduce like a uh, new part. Maybe not so much a new part or structure part or things of that nature, but just a re-skinned one, you know, instead of um, these tubes right here or these square tubes looking all drab and eh, maybe offer up some pieces that are gold or silver or copper color, you know, things of that nature. Something that doesn't really take much effort to do, but adds a lot of personalization character and would be something for the community to kind of keep working towards and, you know evolve it has kind of like a multiple benefits sort of approach here um by keeping people interested in playing and keeping them in involved in the game the newer players that come in will not feel like you know there's not enough info not enough people to help them and so on and so on and you end up growing a community with that and that's kind of a thing that i think this game probably could benefit from well the developers actually agreed with this, and they actually had plans for something similar to this. Unfortunately, they had to shelf it in order to make sure they got the game out on time and as playable as possible. So realistically, it's a, a stretch goal that they'd really like to do, but time and you know resources are always going to be limited. And I completely understand that, but they still could do it in the future. With that said, I'm an impatient bastard, so I came up with a challenge of my own. Now, you might notice at the top of this rocket, there's a pyramid-looking thing, like a triangle, so to speak. Well, that triangle's got uh, some stuff in there. We'll kind of get to that in a second. I came up with this challenge literally first thing after I woke up uh, this morning. Uh, for some odd reason, my TV just kept playing and bouncing through different stream channels. And it ended up on uh, something involving the Illuminati. I love documentaries and things of that nature, so... 
that would explain that. And I was thinking about this. You know, I bet you I can make a symbol that looks kind of like the Illuminati in NSR. And I bet you I could put that in the space. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm going to try to do that. But then I thought, I was like, yeah, that's not really much of a challenge. I could put anything up in space. You know, it's not hard at all. I was like, okay, you're right. How about this? Let's put the Illuminati symbol in space in an orbital velocity, which means 160 km up as well as 7.8 horizontal. Uh, and let's have it corkscrew, which is basically spin around. It's kind of the idea we wanted to work with. That was my idea, and I was like, wow, that's one hell of a challenge. I think I can do it. And, well, as you see, we've already built the rocket. I've tested this, eh, I've tested this a few times. Um, and, yeah, I can make it happen. Unfortunately, due to another issue, which is something that the devs have talked about and said that they're looking into a way of fixing that, there's a couple issues, uh, mostly involving the camera angle. Um... A lot of times when you're doing like stage separations, the camera always goes to the wrong place and you know, makes trying to control that second stage if you're using a gimbal type swivel setup a little bit impossible. So you know, that's a problem we've been having. I have had it happen and I've gotten it to where it actually locked on the right piece and the loopings were actually shown. It was really cool. Unfortunately, when I recorded that, the uh, audio was shit. I'm sorry. So we're trying this again. This is like the seventh time we've tried it. This camera thing is so annoying. All right, all right, so let's go, let's go. We're going to do this. We've got all the, the data we need here. Oh, and I forgot to mention, we're using the auto, uh, the auto orbit gimbal. Uh, and I call it a gimbal. I hate calling it a swivel. I, I live in Florida. I'm not too far from the Kennedy Space Center. It's a gimbal. It's a freaking gimbal. That's what it is. It's a gimbal. <sighs> Moving on. All right, so we have a lot of oxygen in this uh, rocket. And as you can see, we're burning through it pretty quickly. We're actually burning through it a little bit faster than uh, we are with the the fuel itself here. And that that's fine. All right, we're, we're in a no-atmosphere environment. Uh, horizontally, we're at 5 kms. Uh, we're, we're looking really good. We're about to run out of oxygen. Boom. Okay. In reality, that rocket would stop having thrust. But this is a video game, so we don't really care. All right. We've hit the speed 8.35 kilometers a second. Uh, vertically, we're doing pretty good. We're going to get to the follow here. Uh, we have enough vertical up to get us to where we need to. Like I said, 160, and we're good. Now, idealistically, you want to go above 160 because the idea is you want this to spin while in orbit. Unfortunately, this game's mechanics are not <clears throat> ah, Kerbal level. So it doesn't just stay in orbit. So the concept of an infinite Illuminati is a little flawed, but we could still try. Uh, realistically, at this height and this speed, uh, long as the spin is completely circularized, should be no problem. Unfortunately, this is a triangle. Trying to circularize that, not always the easiest thing. So, But in theory, it should detach from the vehicle. And then when you ignite the engines, it should free spin in space and then continue to free spin and continue to get the loopings. All right. So I'm going to detach it. Okay. We're just going to let it drift away a bit. As you can see, it, it's trying to break away. There it goes. There it goes. Now, the moment I hit the number two key is when things get interesting. It is slowly departing from itself. In reality, there would be a little blast to push itself off of it. Uh, well, again, this is a video game. Not a very scientifically accurate one, but, you know.
Now the camera is just going ape shit at this point. This highlights that issue pretty hard, guys. All right. And there it goes. We missed it. Again, th that camera issue is somewhat problematic. Such is life. But it is actually spinning. It is actually spinning, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, that's kind of the idea. Luckily, I do have video of the of it actually working, and I'm going to just splice that on at the end here, and hopefully you guys will enjoy. So uh, yeah, let's get to that now. All right, so we're high enough now. We're going to detach. Okay. There we go. All right, so we got 12 loopings there. We're still in orbit, and it's still going. It's still going, ladies and gentlemen. 14. 15. Look at that. We're we're still climbing too. That's the funny part. 342. <laughs> ah, the infinite Illuminati, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, that is good. That is really good. I would love to have fireworks and lights on this. Unfortunately, they get ripped off this kind of structure here really easy. You need a nose cone to pull that off. Uh, and you have to put them basically in there, uh, but then you'd have to somehow detach the nose cone, which is annoying as all hell. Uh, but yeah, we, we've been able to achieve what we set out to do. We're already up to, what, 24? That is amazing. I'm actually surprised it focused on the secondary structure here, um, or the decoupled structure, rather than just the main body, because that happens quite a bit where it just focuses on the main body. And we're already at 27. Wow. Um, now, in theory, we should not deorbit at all. But we will. Uh, as you look at the angle, we are slightly tilted downward. So, yeah, we are definitely going to deorbit. But how many are we going to get before we hit the atmosphere? I mean, we're going pretty fast. We have a horizontal speed of 8.36. And our vertical speed is picking up. As we get above like three, four, and start hitting that atmosphere, it's going to be a lot of stress on this frame. 35. 36. We still got a lot of altitude. But uh, yeah, we're starting to plunge a little bit more. We've traveled over 1,400 kilometers, almost 1,500 kilometers now. Tell you right now, this is a pretty good ICBM here. <laughs> uh, still spinning. We're now at 41 loopings, 42 loopings. And for the record, I think my record uh, loopings are 17 loops or something like that. Not for this challenge. All right, our vertical speed is now two. We're going to start plunging a whole lot quicker. We're now out of orbit. Eek. Forty-eight loops. All right, there's 51 loops and still going. We're still above 100, but that's going to change real quickly. And for those of you who might be getting motion sick, I apologize, but this is just how that works. Uh, we're about to break 2,000 kilometers distance. Okay, we're going to start hitting some atmosphere, and this thing is going to break apart here very, very soon. 56 loops, 57. 
eight. Can we get 60? I don't think so. That, here's the atmosphere, 3%. 59, yep, 59 loops, and the atmosphere just completely destroys us. But that was the challenge, all right? That's the challenge. Can you get... Oh, apparently 64. All right, so the challenge is getting a triangular-shaped object into orbit, 160 and 7.8 KMS, have it rotate or corkscrew in orbit and get more than 60 loopings, all right? If you can do that, that's the challenge. Um, personally, this was just something I came up with shortly after I woke up today and said, hey, you know what? I think uh, this 